I'd like to tell you a story about uh, Blastoff. Uh, in 2000, I was in Washington, D.C., running XPRIZE and Zero-G, and I received a call from uh, Bill and Larry Gross, who were running Idealab. And they had just raised a billion dollars in cash and had this amazing vision of a private moon mission. And they hired me to come in as the CEO to create this organization. And I'm telling you this story because I want all the teams competing for the Google Lunar X Prize to have the benefit of this background, and not just one or two. Uh, so in 2000 and 2001, before the internet meltdown, we had a private mission that was secretly going on that we got past PDR, past preliminary design review, towards critical design review, and we were looking to do what Google Lunar X Prize is doing, literally to land a private mission on the moon. Initially, we were looking at using a uh, Taurus, and then a Taurus XL launch vehicle. Then we looked at a, a low-cost Athena II vehicle that was available, and eventually uh, decided to go with the Russian Dnepr vehicle. And we were landing an uh, incredible mission uh, that would go to the surface of the moon. We were uh, internally deciding to go to an Apollo site. We looked at Apollo 11 originally and ended up on Apollo 17 as the target because it was sort of picking up where humanity left off. Uh, the revenue model for this was uh, multifold. Uh, one of them was we were going to be selling payload. Uh, people could bring uh, uh, a few grams of private uh, artifacts to the lunar surface. Uh, we were working with Charlie Chafer and Celestis on bringing orbital cremains or human cremains to the moon. Uh, we had a great mission where we were going to allow countries or company sponsors to sponsor planting their national flag on the lunar surface and playing their national anthem. Uh, it was a fun uh, adventure. Uh, we got very far down the road and eventually uh, ended up closing it down because the capital to run a private lunar mission in uh, the post-dot-com meltdown wasn't there. But it gives me confidence that this sort of a Google Lunar X Prize mission is achievable by a small team. Uh, I remember some of the things that we were able to demonstrate that were incredible. Verse, instead of going out and buying multi-million dollar space qualified cameras, we actually looked at the idea of taking consumer cameras that have to withstand the frigid cold of a Winnipeg winter in your back of your car or the super hot summer in Las Vegas. You know, these huge temperature swings that these cameras had. We took them, uh, we removed the normal grease and solder joints, and we replaced them. We were actually able to go through a, a thermal vacuum chamber and almost we believed space qualified consumer grade cameras. It's that kind of, of uh, innovative thinking that could really bring the price of a lunar mission down from hundreds of millions down to tens of millions. I I'm telling you this because I know that some of the Google Lunar X Prize contenders know the background from Blastoff and some don't and I want to have it a fair playing field and allow everybody to know that these business models uh, and these ways of thinking exist. Uh, and I wish all of you contending for the Google Lunar X Prize tremendous luck. I hope you'll think out of the box and literally invent brand new ways to launch, to land, to rove, and new business models that will drive the price of lunar exploration down, not two or threefold, but tenfold. Best of luck to all of you.